Grace and mercy and peace to you today from God our Father, uh, from Jesus Christ our Savior too. I've got a picture to show you today. Have any of you ever seen, oh, it's coming up on the, on the screen yet. I wanted to show you this as a time-lapse video. Any of you ever seen the time-lapse videos of a bean seed growing? I know it sounds just stupid, but there's this one on YouTube that 28 million people have watched because it's awesome. They've got it where there's a pane of glass and you can see below the ground and above the ground and it's sped up to 17,000 times the actual growing rate. So in three minutes, you watch the seed in the ground grow up for like 30 days of growing. So oh, I couldn't get copyright permission to show it to you live today. I wanted to, but let me do the best I can to tell you what that video is like and you'll just have to imagine it. So, they poke in this, this red kidney bean scene and it looks like it's just this dead brown thing, you know, it's not gonna do anything, right? And the whole first day, nothing happens. You probably know the, it's softening up as it starts to absorb some of the moisture from the soil, but on day two, there's this root that pops out and the seed knows which way is up and down and the seed head, the, that root heads straight down into the soil. Days two, three, four, it's just going down, down, down. Day five and six, all of a sudden it gets really hairy and all these white fuzzy root hairs just explode out of both sides and head out all over in the soil all around. Day seven, eight, on top of the soil, it still looks like nothing has happened, but since you see the cutaway view, you know that it's very much alive with the roots underground. But then about the end of the first week is when that shoot pops out of the seed going upward. And as soon as it breaks the soil, then photosynthesis starts, and that's when the growth really takes off. And the leaves start making the first layer, and meanwhile, you can still see the roots getting bigger and bigger underground. And then there's a second layer, third layer, so that by the time you get to the end of that 30 days, the camera has had to pull back because that little seed that looked like nothing has grown into this beautiful, living, alive, growing plant. And 28 million people were either so bored they had nothing else to watch, or they really were fascinated with how a seed can grow. And Jesus says that is a little picture in this word, world of what the word of God is like. Looks like it's really small. Looks like it's dead. How in the world are these words going to change human hearts? How can words even give eternal life? But you know that the word of God when planted in, in the human heart, it it can grow in a way that no other word can. Yes, there are people in this world who write beautiful poems and make very powerful, persuasive speeches, but there is nothing else like the word of God. That when planted in the heart, the, the roots go down deep and it, it grows not into something that's, that's green and, and with leaves, but it is very much life. Life already here and now and eternal life in heaven because Christ Jesus died on a cross. And that word of God plants faith in us and we hold on to him and so what is it that grows in us it's not bean seeds what it is is like we heard last week there's a rest that comes in Jesus you can't find anywhere else there's forgiveness and life in him and that's all on the inside then on the outside it shows itself in a life that really cares for loving God and serving other people where life is not about us getting what, what we want, amassing as much as we can for ourselves. Life truly is about loving and serving our Savior and the world around us. That is what the seed does. But then the question is, well, if that is the power of God's word, why don't I always see that? Either in my own life or in the lives of other people, it sure seems like God's word doesn't always do that. And the answer I hear a lot in our world around us, a lot of people would like to blame the word of God. Say, there must be something wrong with the seed. Maybe it's just so, so mixed up and unclear that people don't really know what it says. People just argue about what the word says. Maybe God's word doesn't actually have any clarity. People say maybe God's word isn't actually from God. Maybe the word of God is nothing more than just another opinion in a world that's full of opinions. But in response to that, Jesus tells a parable you heard. It's called the parable of the sower. Where Jesus says the word of God is living and active and powerful like a seed. And the issue is not with the seed. The issue is with the human heart. And in that parable, Jesus tells about a farmer who's scattering seed. And the same seed goes a number of different places. The difference is there are four different kinds of soil the seed falls on. And it 
just incredibly changes the, uh, the outcome, that depending on the kind of soil the seed was on, uh, the, the outcome was very different. So let me today walk you again through those four kinds of soil, and then Jesus explains what those four kinds of soil represent. But you know, right, it's not about soil. This is speaking about human hearts like yours and mine. And so the question I want you to have on your heart today as you listen again to these words of Jesus is this. What kind of soil is filling my heart as I hear the word of God? So, going back to the parable, Jesus says there are four different kinds of soil. First one is this. Jesus said, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Get your imagination going again and imagine the time lapse for that one. Again, you got the cutaway, you've got the underground soil, above ground soil. You can imagine that, right? Rather than someone poking the seed down in, it just plops on the surface and sits there. And nothing happens. No roots going down. No green shoot coming out. And I don't know how that looks sped up 17,000 times faster, but that'd be pretty quick. The bird comes in and the seed is gone. Jesus explains that this way. He said, When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. Someone not understanding the word of God, it's like it's so compacted from people walking on the soil there that the seed doesn't get in. And I suppose there are two kinds of not understanding. There's the one that's not intentional. Some people, they do open up God's word. They do either read or hear the message that's there, but they honestly don't understand what it's saying. That's one of the main reasons that I'm here to serve you as your pastor. Not that you can't open the word of God on your own. Uh, Sure you can, I, I pray you do. But why do I stand up on a Sunday morning and preach about the word of God? It's hopefully I am able to help you understand the message that's there Because if you would come here this morning and leave and not understand the word of God that was spoken, what good does that do you at all? It's like a bird, like the devil comes and steals it away. But there's another kind too. There's the intentional kind of not understanding. There's the kind where people so harden their hearts against God's word that they they maybe have read the the Bible straight through. They they may know what the message is, but they have no intention at all of, of really listening or understanding or taking it to heart. They have rejected it at... For whatever objection they have, they do not want to listen to it. They do, not want to, they do not want to hear it. And that's like the devil coming and taking the seed away. Uh, I think I could say this. It's a pretty absolute statement. But I, I think you could say that the word of God is more available today than it has ever been at any point in human history. For many years, the word of God had to be spoken because there, it was too expensive to make books. Then people started printing books and the Bible went out in a way it never had before. In our age, it's not just the printed Bible, but if you have any device that's connected to the internet, you can access the word of God really at any time. Looking at that in terms of a farmer, you could say there's more seed being sown now than at any other time in human history, and yet so much of it falls on hard hearts. How many people, even though they could read the word of God, simply don't? How many people, when they hear the word of God, uh, for whatever reason, do not actually take it in and and think about it? Uh, uh, I was talking to a farmer this week asking about what this would look like with a modern cornfield. And their comment on this one was, yeah, if it's so compacted, uh, some of it might sprout, but it's not going to germinate. And honestly, I, driving by here, there's a wheat field on 89 that just got harvested and all the geese are just loving it. Uh, how, much, how much wouldn't the Lake Mills geese love it if a farmer just took all his good seed and spread it out on, on land that was too hard to actually have it sprout? That's the way the word of God, Jesus says, in people whose hearts are, are hard. Second kind is this. Uh, soil number two. Jesus said, Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. 
get your imagination going. What's a time lapse look on that one? This time the seed goes down in and it starts growing. The roots go out, it, it comes above ground. If you only had the above ground picture, it probably looks like a pretty good plant. But since you've got the cutaway view, you can see there's a problem because underground, it's all rocky, and so you can see just by looking there, there's nowhere for that taproot to go down any deeper. It, it's gone as far as it can, and it's stuck. Uh, and maybe that plant grows to an extent. It, it looks good, but Jesus says then a really hot month comes. And because there's no deep root, all the water in the surface gets dried up, and that plant dries up and withers. Jesus explains that one this way. He said, The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Someone who takes in the word of God and it sprouts and grows. Faith is there. This person believes in God. They have faith in Christ Jesus as their Savior but, for whatever reason, they stop growing in their faith. They're content to let their faith be that initial germination where the root stops going, going deeper and deeper and deeper. And maybe you can think of situations where that can happen. The, the child who goes through confirmation class and is confirmed but then never steps foot in church again, the, the, the person who, who takes the Bible information course and soaks in God's word so much loves it that first year uh, but, then, but then just drifts away. Or I, I hope I'm not being too personal with this one but one thing I see here in Lake Mills is this. We value Christian education so much. We, we send our kids to the grade school here. We have Lakeside down the street. I think that's wonderful for our young people my concern sometimes as a pastor is this. We have our kids in God's word, but do we as adults keep studying it the same way we have our kids study the word of God? I, I think it'd be easy for us to be content with a faith that's fairly shallow. That above ground might look healthy and fine, but if you look under the surface, you'd realize there's an issue there because the roots aren't deep. Jesus says, That'll get shown when there's trouble. When people go through hard times in life, that's when faith stands or falls, where it thrives or dries up and withers. Maybe we're going through some of that right now with all the things we face, face now, but Jesus says the real test would be that if there is persecution for Christians because of the word of God. Our country has enjoyed some pretty favorable growing conditions for Christianity for generations. If there would be a time when half of us would lose our jobs because we're Christians, when it really is hard to be a Christian because of your faith, if we were socially ostracized, how much of the visible Christian church would dry up and wither that people would turn their backs on God? Jesus says the issue in that case would not be any issue with the seed or the word of God. The issue is with a shallow faith of people who don't want to let the root go down down deep. Again, I asked a farmer about that, and the reality is if there's too much rain early in the growing season on the corn, that can be a bad thing. If, let's say, end of May, early June, it's really wet, the corn plants just have their roots shallow then. They see no need to send the roots down deep, and if that's the case, you get a really hot, dry July or August, or even a big windstorm can come and just knock the whole field of corn over because the roots were so shallow. Jesus says that's the way the word of God is in the heart of someone who does not really want to have the word go deep. Third kind of soil is this one. Jesus said, other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Again, get your imagination going. Time lots on, that, on this one looks like seed goes in the ground. The, the roots start growing. There's faith there. It, it, it pops above the surface. This time there's no rock underneath to stop the root going deep. This time the problem is there's all kind of other stuff growing on the side, so it's, it's constricted, it can't move out. It can go up and down, but, but not outside to side because of all the weeds that are there. And so what I think is interesting on this one is the plant never dies. 
the plant stays alive, but because it's been so constricted by all the weeds on the sides, it's always this stunted midget kind of plant that never gets big and never produces the fruit that the farmer had hoped for. Jesus says this, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. What is it that would be those weeds that choke out the word planted in the heart? My first thought would be people getting too busy. That's the one I hear all the time as a pastor. I'm too busy uh, to be in God's word. I'm too busy to come to church, too busy for this, too busy for that. That's not the one Jesus picks, though. Jesus says the thing that's like weeds choking out people's faith, uh, two, two of them. The first one is worries about stuff in this life. The second one is there's a deceitfulness, a lie that comes from wealth. Think about each of those for a second. Uh, If you and I are filled with so many worries about this and that, uh, how much can't that fill up your whole life so that there's no room left for the word of God to grow in you? There's a lie that comes with wealth that if only I add this thing or that thing, then finally I will have, have happiness, then I will take a break, then I will be in the word of God. But you probably have seen how that plays out, that the more you try to amass stuff in life, the more you actually might constrict and crowd out the thing that really matters, your own faith. I was talking to that farmer (laughs) <laughs> they st- shared a story of what actually happened once. They planted, just on the side of the field, some rows of sweet corn for the family to have that summer and never treated it with herbicide. And wouldn't you know, the weeds took over to such an extent, the corn never died there, but in the end, they just mowed the field flat because they weren't going to get any sweet corn on that field. All the plants were so stunted in their growth because of the weeds that even though the corn was alive, it was worthless as far as fruit goes. And Jesus says that's the way the word of God is in our hearts if we allow the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, to choke it. And for you and me, if, if you wonder, why don't I feel more of the rest? Why do I struggle with having peace? Why is it I, I struggle with, with having more of, of, of a loving attitude and patience for the people around me? Uh, maybe it's because your faith is, is being choked. That's why the, the growth is stunted. That's, that's soil three. Number four, Jesus said this. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. So those aren't the only things that can happen. This is more that first picture I showed you, Right? That ideal growing condition where nothing else is blocking it. It has the soil below. It has the air and the sunlight above. And how amazing it is to see a plant just take off and grow and thrive. And Jesus says that's what the word of God is like. Jesus says the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what is sown. I asked a local farmer about that one too. What is, what's the actual yield now on corn? Uh, our modern farming has gotten yields far more than even at, at Jesus' time. 100 times is, is nothing now. It's now somewhere between 400, no, 520 and 540 times would be a good yield. You put 33,000 corn kernels in one acre of soil and the potential is there for 18 million kernels to come back out of that same acre of good soil. And Jesus says that's the way the word of God is in, in the good soil of a heart that, that believes. And the fruit there, don't just think about stuff on the outside where you love other people. That's also the stuff on the inside where the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. That for you, you know Christ Jesus as the one who died for you, who took all your sins away. To know that you've got life in heaven, that is a fruit of God's word inside of you. But just like the the growth never just happens below the surface, it's going to sprout and grow so too in our lives that God's word is going to grow into a life on the outside of love for other people. 
Thus the word of God inside of us. Now, let me go back to that question I asked before. Which kind of soil are, are you? The reading today cut out the verses in the middle, but in the middle is a warning from Jesus that there are an awful lot of people who think they see and hear the wonderful things of God, but who are actually blind and deaf. And the warning of this parable is, be careful that you don't look at yourself and say, uh, I would never reject the word of God. There's nothing in me that would ever fight against his word planted in me. I pray that you do see good soil in your heart, that God has worked that inside of you. Most people I've heard of who look at this parable, and this would be true of myself too, say, I'm a bit of all four. Sometimes more this one than that one. Uh, do I need the word of God sometimes to come and break up the hardness of my heart? Yeah. Or to dig out the rocks or to pull the weeds? Uh, yeah, I do. And yet even with that warning in, warning in mind, there's a phrase that Jesus uses here. Jesus said, let whoever has ears, let them hear. Which he says a number of other parables too. And if you'd go to the book of Revelation, there are letters written to churches and every single time Jesus says, if you've got ears, then hear. And so to you today and to me, Jesus' desire is that you would hear the word of God. If you've got those kind of funny looking flappy things on the side of your head, then Jesus wants you today at St. Paul Lutheran Church to hear the word of God. And that's my prayer for you too. That as I preach it today, as you heard it read, that the word of God would fall on soil where it sinks in and grows and produces fruit. And I, I hope that that's your desire for yourself and for your family too. That as the word of God is planted in you, it produces fruit like nothing else in this world can. That you have hope and joy and the peace even in the middle of trouble and chaos. That you have forgiveness of your sins even if the devil would want you to be guilty. And on the outside, you burst forth in taking care of and loving the people around you to such an extent that people say, what in the world is planted in you? And the simple answer is, it's that simple word of God that doesn't look like much, but that when planted sprouts and grows. Amen.